I'm Sophia A. Jackson. I'm the editor and founder of Aphrodisiac Data News. And this Monday morning, I am joined by... Ivan Michael Blackstock. Thank you very much. So we're going to start off with some very random um, performance-related questions, and then we'll go mm. into questions about Track Lord. So where is your favourite performance space? Ooh. Um... That's a really good question. I think my favorite place is my living room. Okay. And, um, you know, I think uh, most of the time we're doing it for other people. We perform for other people and trying to connect our stories and what we're trying to say externally. But I don't know, I've been recently on a journey of this internal uh, journey in terms of reflection and you know sometimes it is about doing it for myself so you know and I think you know I think when we are dancing in our bedrooms or in our living rooms that's when we kind of go the hardest actually yeah. <laughs> you know we dance like when no one's watching you know so yeah. I think yeah the living room oh I love that answer mm. um so who is your favorite choreographer um or dance professional of all time Wow, um, Michael Jackson, easy actually. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I when I was a kid, it was like Michael Jackson, MC Hammer, Bobby Brown. Those were like my top three, you know, male. Bobby Brown. Performers. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, you know. <laughs> he did oh, yeah. um, the soundtrack to the Ghostbusters and I loved it. I was like, I remember I just watch it and just play it over and over and just like, dance around in my bedroom but I think after that it was definitely Usher. Usher was the guy that I think broke new ground in yeah. like for, for the dance scene for me. Definitely. Um, so far what's your pr proudest career moment? Hmm that's a good question too. Um, you know like I think the first thing that comes to me is Beyonce. Okay. You know, working with Beyonce on Brown Skin Girl. Yeah. Um, I felt that like it came full circle for me. You know, all the hard work I've put in, you know, and you kind of always say, well, not everyone, but a lot of us kind of say that, like, I would like to work with the biggest artist in the world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think ideally that would have been Michael Jackson back in the day. Yeah. Um, but you know unfortunately that never happened so I think Beyonce was kind of like the next person I was like I would love to work with her one day and you know just being up in that upper echelons of like dance music art fashion you know and um, yeah that happened. Did you find that intimidating at all because it's Beyonce? Um, yeah I felt the pressure for sure mm -hmm. you know and I think it is just like um this time everyone's watching everyone's going to see this work sometimes when you work in theater you know there's only a small group of people that's going to be able to see the work uh, you know yeah. but i think you know that this is millions and millions going to see this and you're kind of waving the uk flag as well and i felt yeah. that you know from my my team my people the uk you know the black artists in the uk i felt like i had to make sure I hold it down you know and what was beautiful is it's won so many awards and it's hit yeah. so many so many people that that video so yeah it definitely felt that once it definitely was one of the biggest moments up for sure and probably will be quite hard to top that as well I suppose yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so with your show opening um next month uh mm. it's press night who would you want to come, dead or alive? Oh, ah, I know straight away. My grandmother. Oh. So unfortunately, my grandmother passed in 2020. And um, yeah, the biggest fan, you know? And um, yeah, like everything I'm doing right now, it's like for her, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you are hitting the wall sometimes and just like, I don't know how to navigate out of this situation or I feel like not creatively inspired. You know, mm -hmm. I definitely remember that my grandmother 
prayers are kind of protecting me and guiding me through this journey, you know, because yet we trap, Lord. So there are times creatively, I am still kind of going through that creative process. Sometimes it's up, yeah. sometimes it's down, mm-hmm. you know, so definitely my grandmother. Thank you. Um, and finally, if you're trading for your for a show, um, what are your forbidden, forbidden food? So are there things that you know you shouldn't be eating, but you can't resist? Hmm. That's a good question too. Uh, <laughs> you know, because I've been fluctuating with my diet at the moment. So I would say anything that's yellow, yellow foods, <laughs> you know, chips and stuff like that, because um, uh, it's not good for my skin. Yeah. Like I really break out and stuff. And recently fish has been a thing where I can't really touch, which has been quite annoying. Oh. But, um, it's just been recently my body has just kind of pushed it out and said nope no more Ivan so um yeah but I I do love like a lot of yellow foods but you know (laughs) I think like prepare when I prepare for a show or get ready to try to prepare at my optimum I am trying to eat as clean as possible you know because even when you do like a hardcore day of training like uh if you're not eating the right foods or getting the right sleep you wake up and you just feel you feel it in the morning. You don't feel that recovery. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if you had like some lean meats or like, you know, veggies and even me putting meat back into my diet is a new thing. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no yellow. <laughs> no yellow food. For all of us, to be yeah. fair, because yellow food is never good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Right, let's get into Trap Lord. So this morning mm. we're here discussing your latest production, um, Trap Lord. So in your own words, what is this immersive dance performance about? It's about... Uh, I, I, it's, it's about a feeling. Okay. You know, I can give you the basic, like, you know, it, touch, it touches on identity, masculinity, it goes on this hero's journey, da, da, da. But mm-hmm. on a real deeper uh, artistic level, it's a feeling. It's, um, you know, trying to go to a place of um, collective consciousness, you know, mm-hmm. and that's something that kind of goes past my ego, past, you know, looking at my own personal issues and but also bringing other people's, you know, um, traumas um loves you know all of that into one massive pot and you know how can we share a story you know um so i would say very much it's uh is about that but on a more simpler level <laughs> in that sense um it looks at um mental health you know through the black masculine days you know and i try to be careful with my words because it's always changes and it, when I get asked this question it will change all the time yeah. you know because I am forever learning you know and this is a piece where hopefully my audience who sees this work will learn and you know I'm learning what I'm making and creating this piece of what um, black means to me what masculine means to me yeah um what mental health means to me. And why did you choose to call it Trap Lord? Um, I go off everything off a feeling, and that's only just recently been a thing, I would say in the past five to six years, you know. Um, I think sometimes uh, in the West, we over um, intellectualize stuff, you know. It, what does it mean? Da, da, da. It means many things. Yeah. Trap Lord, it really, you kind of feel it, it says something already, you know, Trap Lord, you know, we know in the kind of street culture what Trap Lord means, um, you know, uh, if you're coming from a certain type of upbringing, Lord means something different from in from um, an African perspective to maybe a Caucasian perspective, so, um, you know, yeah, it was a feeling, the, the original name was Trap Lord of the Flies, Okay. And um, 
for many different reasons, we chose to kind of go with just Trap Lord. Um, but yeah, it, it, it all kind of came from feelings. It came from what I saw in the room. It came from conversations. And the original name Trap Lord of the Flyers was looking at, um, have we fallen, you know? And I mean, when we've fallen, like, have we fallen into this mental trap? Have we spiritually fallen, you know? And I was looking at um, ideas of, yeah, the fallen man, paradise lost, you know, um, losing everything, um, depression. <laughs> so yeah, that all came out of it. And, you know, the flies was like not necessary um reference reference in lord of the flies but it was like yeah. angels came to, okay. came to my mind flies yeah. to you know uh <laughs> i was gonna say the effort but feces you know this attracted to this certain ideas you know yeah um, so yeah it means many things and it's a feeling and that feeling when you feel stuff i think you can have you can see or hear or you know think of many different ideas I think in an intuitional space um it's more colorful than something that's sometimes rigid and it's like it's this you mentioned that um the street culture term for trap lord what does it mean for people that might not know what trap lord means mm. so um I've asked this question to many people what does street culture mean to them yeah. And it means a lot of things to many people. Some people, it's very much gang violence and, you know, all the negative stereotypes. Um, a lot of it is the magic of what's come out of street culture, street dance and the DIY culture, youth culture, hip hop, punk, you know, revolution. Yeah. Um, so I think it's all of that, you know, again, it's like I'm um maybe trying to uh i don't know I, i've in my creative journey i've realized many things mean a lot of things and everyone's gonna have their own interpretation yeah and sometimes i've been trying to be so clear on what this means and sometimes i feel like nobody gets it okay <laughs> so i was like you you've gone through this experience you've felt this so this is what it means to you, you know? And I think that's also came from me having a realization that, you know, um, I don't know, I felt that in, in school for a very long time, I felt like I was misunderstood. I didn't do really well in, you know, secondary school. Mm -hmm. So like for a very long time, even leading up into my late twenties, shall I say, I felt like I was stupid. You know, I feel like, why can't people get me? Like, I, mean, I realize, okay, I communicate and I do things maybe slightly differently. Maybe I communicate more easily with my body, or I, if I do this thing, this is how the way I can best express myself. Yeah. Um, and I think with dance, it's, um, what does this mean? <laughs> you know, what does this mean? Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. But I can be like, oh my gosh, if I said, use my word, look at this tripod, snap, hit it, hit, and then I hit it on the ground. Ah, oh, then if I give it words, then it gives it something, doesn't it? Yeah. But um, I could always say, do a, a sound effect and it would mean something totally different. Mm -hmm. You know, I could say something else and it could mean something different. So mm -hmm. it's uh, quite interesting when it comes to a language and, you know, um, communication so I feel uh with everything said it's like and actually going back to trap lord um trap lord is very much uh, a piece where I try to communicate through many different mediums so you're gonna see the body you're gonna see voice from yeah. spoken word to song to rap but also there's gonna be you know video to hopefully use as a bridge so there's going to be many bridges to hopefully understand there's going to be archetypal symbolism there's going to be okay. symbolism that maybe is connected to street culture and yeah. you know okay this is relatable to me I can turn on the tv or go on my phone and understand that reference you okay. know but I think I'm very interested in expansion but also this kind of idea of like minimalism so um yeah that's a long answer <laughs> 
So I know um, from what I read, it covers life, death, and rebirth from a black male perspective. Mm. Was there a specific incident that this was born from? Um, you mentioned the passing of your grandmother. Was that just mm. for this or? Yeah, I think, you know, um, yeah, partly. I think like I've realized I, um, I die every day. This might sound a bit like morbid, <laughs> macabre, but like um, I, before I go to bed, you know, <laughs> I die. And then I wake up, you know, in this way, awakening, you know. And um, yeah, it was looking at, you know, moments of um, uh, resurrection and, you know, within myself and, you know, enlightenment and, you know, moments of being in this purgatory and trying to figure it out and then breaking through, but then also letting go of ideas and letting go of parts of myself to be renewed. So um, I think during the pandemic, we all kind of, you know, experience that in some shape or form, even if it is through still externally through the TV or through your phone or yeah. through uh, a close friend or, you know. So I think very much so it kind of uh, started to make sense that actually this is what I'm trying to say, you know, is very much circle, <laughs> trap lord. It's very much a, a circle, a cycle, a, a thing that repeats you know, and there's certain cycles that you can take yourself out of and pull, but with Trap Lord, I've been, I started this work in 2015. Wow. So it's been a long time of um, getting to this point, you know, and it never was, it's about this. Mm -hmm. You know, originally it was just like, I had some group of men in the room and we spoke about many things from our, about our childhood, things that we love, things that we hate, you know, um, traumas. And we made a piece of art, you know, okay. together. It's collective yeah. consciousness, you know. And then I performed it in a very small theater in Essex. And then it connected with people, it resonated. And I'm like, okay. And then more people fed that um, organism. You know, I had Mandem crying in my arms saying, bro, you told my story, you know, wow. something real to me. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And then they started telling me, you know, this thing. And I was like, well, this kind of is not just Ivan's journey, you know. Yeah. And yes, it is very much led by Ivan's kind of um, arrow, shall I say. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, it's more than that. And you said that you were all in a room talking about your different experiences and your highs and lows. Mm. So often we hear about black men, well, men generally, don't speak openly about their emotions. So that experience seems quite unique to me, but is this mm. something that you can relate to personally? Are you able to express yourself emotionally or is it only through dance that you do that? I think uh, yes and no. I have certain safe spaces, mm. um, but I think, you know, we all have parts of ourselves that we need to unlock, a trap that we need to unlock. It's a game, <laughs> you know, a little bit. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think in certain circles and spaces, I can't do that. I don't feel like I can do that. Certain times um, in my, I don't know, my day or my life or where I'm at. Yeah, it, 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 there is moments where I can fully go. And then there's moments that I know I don't, I can't do that. And I feel that it's also depending on if, for myself, if I haven't um, set up my day right. You yeah. know, if I haven't set up my day right, then um, I feel pretty much all over the place or I haven't rooted myself before. I um, share myself with the world, you know? So sometimes we come out of this sleep and dream and then we're like, oh, we've kind of, you know, um, just walking through like a zombie and then we're, we're meeting people from at work and da, 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 da. But I think that what's helped me a lot is just rooting myself, finding myself, able to do what I need to do, 
push out my energy or bring in energy. Um, and then like, okay, just I've kind of got myself, my put all the pieces together. Now I can share, you know? Um, but yeah, I do feel it right now. It's, it's super hard for men to express themselves because um, social media is a big issue <laughs> in a sense of sh the sharing of information or like especially of the economic crisis that keeps coming in and out and stuff like that of working class people it's just like especially young men they're, they're trying to feed these kings and trying to be these entrepreneurs especially black men you yeah. know I think a lot of black men are very entrepreneurial mm -hmm. and when it keeps on crashing or they don't feel like they have support um this kind of can get to you you know yeah. and especially with certain, I think, uh, social media and internet communities. There's all of these communities of black pill, red pill, this thing, you know, this is what the new masculine and men's are simps and all this stuff. It kind of can throw you off and you, especially with the absent father in a lot of men's yeah. home or young boys' home, mm -hmm. is like, what are you anchoring to? You know, who is leading, teaching you the way? you yeah. know but cause there is no no initiations anymore you know when do you know you are becoming a man you know and um I'm always still asking you know women and trying to understand a little bit more and like when do you know you are becoming a woman you know and I've spoken to a, a few and they said oh when I feel like I have my period you know that time of the month you know I feel <laughs> like actually I'm becoming something is changing in me yeah. And I think for men, sometimes we don't know at what point is this mm -hmm. is I've I'm over here now. And sometimes a lot of men realize when they're in their thirties, sometimes like, oh, <laughs> hold on, I'm a man. Yeah. You know what's going on? I've been on computer games and da 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 da, or you know, escaping actually, and also trying to maybe figure it out in many different ways. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah I, I think it's uh interesting of how men are expressing themselves because I feel we it's also very obvious of where they feel that power yeah. and some of them put it into music for instance um and that's why you see drill and you know trap and music is is so huge for men and so um life-changing because it's like I can finally have a voice I can say something and you know again this whole intellectualizing stuff I might say something yeah. and then um it might usually get sometimes get pushed down you know so they don't feel that um when is the right time to speak the only time is the right time to speak is maybe put it into a 16 bars or yeah. into this song you know um yeah and um what do you hope that audiences will get out of coming to see Trap Lord? Um, I hope they can um, able to resonate resonate with a feeling that we're all the same the way we come in different shapes and sizes and, and, and colors and you know but um uh, i i think sometimes we try to be as open as possible but then we i don't know we box things in and put another trap around it yeah. and i'm trying to as much as i can unlock traps and you know um be on the, the the hero's journey so now you know once they've kind of gone through this kind of fever dream because trap lord is kind of like a fever dream <laughs> a little bit yeah um, i hope they can take it some of it as medicine you know and able to um share their experience you know because i think that um my healing came from sharing you know, and that's me sharing my dance, yeah. sharing this personal thing with what's happened to me, sharing um, something I love, you know, this kind of exchange. 
Um, so hopefully, yeah, they can we we can share because I think right now um, resources are getting tighter, things are get feeling a lot more constricted. So we're feeling a little bit more like this, you know. Yeah. And I think yes, there is a level of um, this is mine, but there is also another part of ourselves. I think we need to open up and be able to share. And talking of sharing, so Trapdog is part of um, Sad Sadler's Wells's well seasoned um, program mm -hmm. of events celebrating Black dance. How important is it for cultural venues to put on initiatives like this? Do you think? Yeah, I think you know, like uh, it's been hard for so long. I think for many Black creatives and artists to feel like, hey, look, I'm here look, <laughs> what else can I do? You know, I've got the funding, I've got this. I don't know how else to try and um, best way to communicate and get over to you like I, um, I need to feel valued, you know, yeah. and um, I need to be heard. So I think that, yeah, it is really important for, you know, a lot of cultural institutions and, you know, other initiatives to start, building these these programs and even sometimes it doesn't even have to be somewhat this is black dance you yeah know, just feel like let's just, just include us you yeah. know because actually um you know i saw especially a lot of african artists and black artists we've been doing all the research and development all the r d and understanding how do we get into these buildings how do we um what is european european a westernized work and yeah. we understand our culture their culture but it doesn't feel like it's reciprocal on their side it's like oh this is what we do barrier you know yeah. <laughs> and um actually i think there is a lot and we know this you know there's a lot that they can learn from us you know because actually now we are looking at your side and doing the westernized way you know, but there is also something deep in our culture and rooted that, you know, we have been sharing and we're open to share, you know, but um, don't um, tokenize us or don't like use yeah. it as like this thing we're just dangling, you know, it's like, no, we are valuable. And also you, you can't deny um, black culture's power anymore. No. You know, your child's listening to it. They're busting those Afro beats dances in their bedroom. All of this culture, you know, even for instance, you know, Kanye West, even though I think the media has made him out to be a madman and he's made mostly a very sensitive soul, you know, but look at his influence in fashion. He's a music artist, but he's got his hand in Balenciaga, <laughs> Gap, Yeezy other yeah. brands and other people are entrepreneurs i mean apprentices that's come underneath him that's now working to for Givenchy, you know um dior all of these things and it's just like um sometimes i think with theater and um, dance it's sometimes a bit slow and they just need to pick up the pace a little bit more because it feels as if i can kind of see changes more um visible through music or through fashion or through other you know um, genres and other mediums but I think sometimes with theatre it can be a little bit slow. Do you mean slow in terms of um, di diversifying their audience and do you mean slow in that sense? Yeah I think so like you know I feel um, when I go to um, a hip-hop show it's always packed with all sorts of people <laughs> you know again with different shapes and sizes and for me and that's the the end result that's where we want to try and get to you know but for some reason um uh, i think you know certain times the, the 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 culture of it just takes the long road when it's very clear like that's the path look the path is there there's other um, great companies that have done so, like Breaking Convention, Palawa, and stuff like that, where you can very clearly see, look at what they're doing, you yeah. know, and they're 
there's <laughs> choreographers and artists been winning Olivier Awards, MBEs, I don't know what else to uh. show. Like, look, it's it, it's happening. Look at the and you know, I think there is sometimes um uh, a pushback of listening to us and accepting our way of doing things because again it's like they're used to being safe and doing it in this way but to actually galvanize the new audience the gen z audience especially with the gen z where they're straight on through digital mediums now not yeah. even going to the theater you you need to try something new and allow the new in the rebirth in and maybe you need to this thing needs to die and then to, to resurrect something new you know and um but I think it's clearly coming you know and I feel especially with my big inspirations I try to always look at the young kids man you know <laughs> like the 15 year olds these 18 year olds they have a different energy that they are pushing out and sometimes we're like oh they're on their me social media on their phones da, 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 da. but the connectivity is very different from how i think people who maybe the millennials and the older the boomers are how they connect actually these young kids even they're on their phone they connect with people in africa brazil japan da, 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 da. and they're doing businesses and you know creating opportunities elsewhere they're going there you know, they're actually traveling a lot more than I would say some of the millennials and the boomers. So, yeah. you know, it's quite interesting. Um, and I think that like, we can learn a lot from, yeah, just other cultures, not just uh, black and African culture. I want to learn a lot more what's happening in India. But for me right now, India is also really growing, okay. you know, with, economically and how they're pushing out their art you know yeah. some of the places I'm looking at personally from like oh this is interesting is Africa Russia and India okay you know especially when it comes to like um uh this subculture street culture thing mm -hmm. you know of the newer voices and how they're flipping stuff and trying new ideas and the cross-pollination of ideas you know um it's quite interesting to me yeah screen people well young people having too much screen time always gets a lot of bad press but it's not mm. if, as you say because they're obviously some a lot of creativity comes out of that so talking about young people i saw on your instagram mm. that you posted um a screenshot of your personal record yeah national record um, of achievement nra yeah your personal yeah. statement First of all, it made me feel really old. I was like, oh, <laughs> that was a bit of a flashback for me, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I just thought it was really nice what you wrote. And obviously now you, you're achieving those same dreams. Um, mm. And you're obviously somebody that's inspirational to the next generation. So what would you say, what tips would you give to the next generation who want to be dance makers? Um... It's, well, first, if it's going to be okay. Sometimes oh. we overthink everything, especially me. And, you know, I can also see that within the younger generation because there's so much information out there. It's like, where do I, again, hold myself to, anchor yeah. myself to? And sometimes it is like anchoring yourself to your, your family, your culture, you know stuff that's around you like kind of really look what's around you and use those tools you know and I think that's kind of definitely how um I think I achieved certain things in my life you know yeah. I wouldn't have done it just like Ivan I had this you know thing of um, maybe um trying to get my voice heard you know yeah. and I know that actually um I struggled kind of using my voice like some of these great young men that are making amazing music I realize okay my body is the thing how I communicate so recognizing seeing that being having that level of awareness um yeah. and then also yeah my peers my friends are the ones who picked me up making sure I had that like well done you know and that's yeah. the the energy that 
you know, at first I wasn't always doing it to be a big star. I was doing it for my mom. I was doing it for my friends. Like, yeah. mom, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, like, let's we all kind of make a little dance routine, you know, and like, yeah, this is it, you know. We didn't really care if some people in the playground or whatever didn't really like it. We thought it was it, yeah. you know. So I think it's making sure that, uh, yeah, you have good support and good people around you because yeah. it, it can get lonely at times, you know, and like, um that also builds resilience and being in a place of solitude but it, it is very much um at times for me personally feels great when I can again going back to this sharing sharing look what I've made and look what I've done and I think that I learned that a lot from hip-hop you know yeah. hip-hop is about this kind of exchange giving back these ciphers and this concept you know um so I would say like hold on you know like, and it is very much like uh, there is many paths you can take and each path you will take, you will learn something. But it depends if um, you take that lesson on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you could take the fast path and you can get there to your dream or to this thing very quickly. But then you might realize actually it's not really it because I got there so quick, there's nothing exciting actually I thought it was this or you could take the long road mm -hmm. you know and then realizing actually I love this scenic view I've met this person I've gained this new experience and yeah. even for me I took the scenic route and I upskilled in many different areas not just dance you know and that's where um uh I started yeah having a career in you know art curation and programming and right. you know mentoring and putting other people on Mm -hmm. so um yeah I think hold on I, I can't really say this is the way yeah. you know because I think none of us know what is the way mm -hmm. I think I can only kind of uh share my again share my experience and like this is what I've gone through this is what I've learned because if we don't share experiences that's when I think there's more car crashes and people are getting lost is that like, okay you did it that way I'm not gonna do it that way because actually this is what resonates with me I'm gonna do it like this and even you know um don't be scared to um put yourself out there you know I think I think I'm always very much knocking on people's doors of like hey this is what I do look up my yeah. arms, you know being at Sadler's World I remember I used to be in the cafe just doing admin just to make people know that I am a choreographer I'm coming <laughs> I'm here you know and um, watch out for me I'm going to be here you know so I think it is like letting people know inviting people to your work and again you never know how people are connecting with your art and your with your voice and some people can't give you I know I've been in that situation as an art programmer sometimes yeah. I can't give that talent that thing they want straight away but once I get this thing yeah I'm putting you on <laughs> mm -hmm. you know and yeah um yeah I think yes that's some of my thoughts thank you that was really wonderful um that's it I'm done unless there was anything oh, else you wanted to share um no I think that was a uh, thank you for those questions uh, <laughs> some of those questions were a bit like oh this is an interesting question um Yay! yeah no thank you <laughs> Thank you. I'm really looking forward to seeing the show um, oh, next Thank month. you. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, you too. Thank, thank you, Bia. Bye. Take care. Bye. Yeah, bye.